DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Evening and welcome to Tuesday night with Brian and Jay. Hi. Da, 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 da. Scary. <laughs> scary. <laughs> oh, it's a typical Tuesday night. Uh, I've got to get it is before here. Halloween. It's scary it Tuesday night. Okay, there we go. I had to get our super to say. So tonight we've got a couple of topics we're going to be hitting for those of you out there watching. And we want to thank you for being with us. Folks are just joining and jumping in. We're going to talk a little bit about the whole concept of is it time to kind of maybe re-rip some of your songs from the past that you had on CD? Um, Brian's been doing some some videos talking about MP3 and file sizes and all this. And we're going to dig into that tonight. And then we're going to wrap up tonight's show talking a little bit about some of the scary music Jay plays to alienate his neighbors. It's great. Yes. It's going to be great. Not just Monster Mash and Thriller. We no. got you. Oh, what? There is more than that? Yes, we got you. Oh, I, I was going to say that. Was not, and not the, not the famous encore twice of John Young's, the, what was the, um, Smiling Purple People Eater. The hell song was that, Purple Brian? People Purple Eater. People thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Well. Thank you. So, yeah. so before we get too far, I have to say, the earworm I've had all week has been that uh, cruising song that you played last week. Yeah, it's like every morning I'm waking up and it's like I need to listen to Dancing Queen. I gotta get it out of my. I tell you how to get rid of earworms. There's a <laughs> PSA for all of you. The first time I remember it happening to me, and it was painful. Like mm-hmm. literally, I, I was losing sleep over it. Was I was probably about 12 years old, maybe 13. It was Jethro Tull. Thick as a brick. It wouldn't stop. So what I had to do is just go ahead and give in to it. And I listened to it over and over and over and over again until it became lexicon and it went away. It went away. Okay. That's how you get rid of earworms. You gotta just give in and listen. You just gotta you just gotta go all in. Or works for me. Or, or hum white Christmas. Never fails. Wipes it right out. That would be awesome. And then you move on to the next one. You move on to Christmas music. I can't get it out of my head, Santa's. And it's it's festive. Yeah, festive. That's we'll go with that. I'm glad you enjoyed it though. Yeah, that that, and it's a good version. I used to play it on I you guys know I used to work on boats, and when that track came out, I played it all the like we did seven nights a week of cruises, and I would play that at the beginning of the night as we left the dock. That makes sense. And it was like a great new version to play. And I would get all the time people come up to me be like, who is that? That's a great version. I'm like, believe it or not, it's Gwyneth Paltrow, who oh, in really? probably 20 years we'll hate because she'll just be such a you-know-what. But for now, she seems cool enough that we can like her and Huey and life is good. So and, and then the, day, the next day, so I'm working out in the shed, and both the, the uh, Kenny, Kenny the uh, Login song and the Huey Lewis song both were played. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the, nice. Uh, it's like, I mean, wow. I, I, it's like, is this Brian Red Station? Is there, uh, yeah, like, my really? daughter hates it because usually I'm pretty good at kind of predicting what's going to happen. <coughs> like, if she has an idea, I'm like, you know what, honey, maybe you shouldn't do that. And, you know, and, and I'll give her a reason why and what the outcome will be. And it happens. And it's like a daddy's always right kind of thing. But she's pushed back and she says, no. You're not always right. You're just a prophet. You prophesy stuff, and you're a really good one. And I wish you'd stop prophesizing my life because it's starting <laughs> to really get annoying. You did maybe, that in Vegas. Maybe that's what I'm doing with music. You, maybe yeah, no, was... you do. You do that with slot machines. I watched you do it. That stupid <laughs> buffalo thing. You kept no, not this. No, wait, wait, wait. Right there. And all of a sudden, she's like, "No, I'm going to play over here." And you're like, "Okay." <laughs> Like here's Brian getting hand pays. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's jump into the topic tonight. So, Brian, you've been talking a little bit about 
about uh, files uh, with the mm -hmm. MP3s. Kind of give us uh, where you, what what kind of kicked that uh, into your your thought process here in this past week. Well, I was talking about just getting the most out of your speaker system because I, I was seeing some posts on social media where people were asking about adding processing gear to their systems. And I was curious what kind of system they're running. And it's pretty modern stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, something decent like a Pioneer or a Denon controller or mixer with a nice sound card and like a VDJ or Serato kind of thing, along with some kind of power speakers. And, you know, good stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, you don't really need all this processing gear if you've got everything set up right. So I walked through the whole, you know, Unity setting on the mixer, zero dB, and, you know, trying to do the zero dB thing on the speakers, just setting up the DSP files. Because if you're running low bitrate MP3s or something else, or you're trying to DJ off of YouTube or something, mm -hmm. that's going to affect how everything sounds. Right. And somebody popped in on one of the comment sections. It was actually on Facebook under the video and said, you know, you talk about 320K MP3 a lot. I use 128 because back in the Napster days, they said that was fine. And so why would I want to use more space for these bigger files? And, and I explained that, you know, back in 2000 when Napster was a thing, we were looking at MP3s more as something that you listen to on a personal listening device. Sure. Like the early iPods and things. And space was also an issue on those because they didn't Dude, have big hard drives. Nope. So they wanted to save space and give you something for personal listening that was acceptable. So they felt like 128 was fine. But now we're running through large sound systems and broadcasting this stuff at events. So... Bit rate does matter. It it does, you know. The, the higher the bit rate, the better the sound. And MP3 at a 320k rip is not the best thing you can get either. You can do wave, you can do flack, you can do CD, you can do all kinds of stuff. But I feel like personally, and this is just an opinion, that my system sounds really good with 320k MP3 files. Mm -hmm. Now, could I get better files? Absolutely. Would my system sound better? With better files, probably, but it's very acceptable, I feel, just running 320k MP3. So that's where that whole thing came from. <clears throat> sure. And I uh, just, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, it's okay. I'll take a break. I just I wanted to add one thing because I had to do a sound test about four <sighs> years ago for the purchase. I think you've seen them at the NAM show. We used to have this rack of speakers, and it was called the GS Wave. The flat ones. Um, no, no, no. This this was um, Gary Stewart, the sound designer and club empresario with sound. Okay. Did a design. It, it's about nine or ten feet tall. Okay. It starts at the bottom with, um, I think there's four 18-inch bass. Then it goes up to the next level. And then the top level is a horn that's got all these directional kind of louvers on it. And it's $100,000. It's one stack. And it was part of our pro audio thing. Well, there's a club in LA that has four of them. So I got the phone call. Can you come up and demo the system? And I said, sure. And they said, do you have high res audio? And I said, I'll find some. Well, A, you can't. Like, I could not find a song that was high res. I'm to understand that when people do their own production, they can do that. Mm -hmm. But I did find WAV files. Right. But I also had MP3s. I agree with everything you just said, 100%. And I would get at the shows, be like, hey, we're going to this club. Make sure you, you're using wave files. And I never quite understood. So before the gentleman looking at the system came in, and I'm talking everything was at zero dB, but as loud as I could get it, I played the same song as an MP3 and a wave file. And through a huge club system, mm -hmm unbelievable difference hmm. you yeah you can, you can literally the 320k sounds terrible now through my s system for weddings 320k sounds great i don't right. pick up the difference between that and a wave but when if you're a dj who's going to eventually or someday soon end up playing through a bigger system be cognizant that some tracks will have to be on wave because mp3s just don't they lose in compression 
what MP, what waves and flax pick up in. I just wanted to point as a, a real life example because I'm like, I don't think I'll hear a difference. And it was like yeah. night and day. It was oh, amazing yeah. and, how different it was. You yeah. can. Through our stuff, not so much maybe, but through well, a big, big system. Woo. Right. Yeah, the bigger the system, the more it's going to make a difference. But I was going to sidetrack a little bit and ask any of you, and, and I already know the answer, and it's not like bad that your answer is going to be what it is. Ever heard of Herbie Jr.? No. Uh, also no. known as Herb Pump Powers. So no. way back, and well, not, I, sh I shouldn't even say that. Since always, okay, <laughs> when you record a song, it goes on some kind of demo file or demo tape. Back in the old days, it would go on reel to reel, right? You're in the studio and you record it. And it goes to a, a mastering lab after that. And there's somebody in there that back in the old days, they would cut the master. They would EQ it out and cut the master of your record to go to press, right? Well, back in, I guess it was probably the very, very early 80s, there was a gentleman named Herbert Powers, and he brought his son, Herb Jr., in to work at this record lab. It was above Studio 54 in New York City. And Herbie Jr., he figured out a way to get the most bass out of a record. And something else that he did that he would get in trouble for. You know what a run out groove is on a record? The, the black shiny part mm -hmm. in the middle? Usually yeah. you see some numbers or something etched in there. You do that with like a, like a little nail or something, right? Well, what Herbie used to do is write secret messages to people in the run out groove. So he kind of became famous for this. And I'll show you an example. Uh, do you guys know this track right here? Uh, you know, you're familiar with cutting records label at all? It's like, you know, freestyle, electro and all that. Oh, it's got the saw blade. Yes. But, yeah. This is Hashim with Al Nafish the Soul. You know that song? It's time. Okay. Herb cut this. He mastered this record. Um, he also did um, Corina's Temptation. You probably know this one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He did like a bunch of Salt and Pepper stuff, Information Society, Shannon with the Music Play. He cut that, which is really the one I probably should have grabbed. <laughs> but, wow. but he was, he, I mean, very famous. And all of these artists know him, and people would want him to cut their records because he really knew how to make them sound great, you know, for club back in the days. And what I was doing on the phone while Jay was talking, I didn't mean to be rude. I was trying to prep a little bit because I wanted to do a quick screen share here, mm -hmm. if I can, to show you what his little messages were because I took some pictures. Hmm. Um, Good just real quick. That'll show you up. Mind. I'm trying to... See, this is the kind of stuff he used to write in there. Dedicated to Dorian it's like Martinez. It's hot in 83, 87, and still in 94. And then um, this is on my Facebook, so forgive the, the stuff here that I'm doing. But Herbie Jr. and a smiley face. That was his signature. So it was two dots, a little triangle, and a smiley face. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kelly. Congrats, Papa Wiz, kid, again. Apparently they had kids. So there's little messages like that he would write in the runout groove and became wow. very famous for it. And everybody wanted Herbie to cut their Herbie Jr. to cut the records for him. Hmm. He's actually a Facebook friend of mine. And people who have had these records since they came out and love these records don't even look at the runout groove and know who Herbie Jr. is. So anyway, that's my history lesson on Herbie Jr. Yeah. And and the reason I bring it up is because he still does masters at wow. his home studio. And That's awesome. He has said in interviews, because he's like the sound guy, like he knows how to master stuff, mm -hmm. the one that everybody looks to, you know. And he says the best format we've ever had for fidelity is compact disc. It's really good. So that's the best. MP3 is heresy, and no one should ever listen to them because <laughs> they're that bad. Big sound guys don't like MP3s. Oh, oh. Herbie is like, what are you doing to my songs? Yeah, yeah. I, I made these beautiful songs and you're making MP3s? Never do that. So he hates MP3. Right. So 
you know, a sound guy, he, as a sound guy, he really knows the difference. Nobody I've talked to big shit. sound guys and they've literally said like, uh, I, I was in the van with Christian listening to something. He's like, oh, and he reached over and turned the volume down. I'm like, what? He goes, ah, oh, this sounds terrible. You yeah. can't hear that hissing. And that I'm like, no, dude. Yeah. I've got it turned up so loud. No, I can't. It was like Kerncraft or something. I'm like, no. But, <laughs> right. but you and I have talked about this before, and we had that new mix of the V10 at NAMM, and everyone had such a like, oh, my God, oh, my God. The, you know, it's got compression. I'm like, dude, compression, you know, whatever. And then I messed with it, and I messed with the compression on it. I want compression on everything. Because, like, we didn't turn the volume up, but I swear it got louder. Like, the lights didn't change, but mm -hmm. it was notably louder. They're like, no, it's not louder. You're just perceiving it to be louder because now the compression is coming in and pushing all the waves where they should be and kind of thing. It's, I'm like, right. That's, it's, it's a weird thing that that kind of stuff does. And there, there's, like, buttons on old school stereos for those of us who are older that say loudness on it. Mm -hmm. Yes, because there's a certain feel that loud stereos and either a car stereo or a home stereo has, and what they were able to do is achieve that same sort of fidelity by flipping a switch and not cranking it up. Yeah, so no, it's, kind of, it's, a, kind of, it's a great yeah. touch. As is the band loudness from Japan, the '80s metal band featuring oh. Akira Takasaki. On Rock and roll crazy nights. Yeah, I was gonna say they yes. had to work on that. See, you, you thought you got me and you totally I did. said I finally have my moment in the sun and once again you rain Sorry. on it. Just <laughs> Brian S. Red Rain. Hey, hey, hey. You should do like a chocolate rain, but be like I'm going to run. Brian I'm Red Rain. You. Remember I'm that? Get from... on your feet. I know the song. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's one of the founders of YouTube. of hell. But maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Maybe that was somebody else. Maybe but anyway, um, yeah, it, it's for what I run, it's fine. I don't hear anything that sounds bad, but I do notice when something is old. Hmm. So, for instance, if I get a request for a song, it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't played this song forever, you know? Or maybe I've never played it, but I know it, but I've never played it live. I put it on, and it's like, oh no. Yeah, I got something. It. I've got some of those. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing that I ripped in 2003, yeah. you know, and it sounds terrible because I did it at 98 or 120 Whatever. or something. Mm -hmm. But I even all tell. like it's Stand By Me. Do you have Stand By Me by Benny King? Of course yeah. you do. I have like three versions of it, and they all sound like I stood down the hall with a tape recorder <laughs> from the vinyl. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I, they don't register as 96. No. <clears throat> excuse me, 96K bit, but. You know, they just, there are certain <laughs> tracks that were not well mastered way, no. way back. You know, Otis Redding Robinson stuff sounds is... great. Uh -huh. Smokey doesn't always hit the numbers. Otis Redding usually does. Well, that was a Motown thing. Uh, but... but wasn't his Muscle Shoals? Like a lot of Otis Redding stuff was Muscle Shoals, I think. Well, here's as, as far as I think thing. those guys were big on like pushing. Everybody wanted to sound like Motown. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the you know Barry wanted to upgrade things you know and do all this stuff because they were recording vocals in the upstairs bathroom at Motown. That's that was their vocal studio, the upstairs bath. So nobody else could get the Motown sound because nobody else had an upstairs bathroom like they had at Motown. <laughs> Makes sense. So they would run a microphone up the stairs, and that was the vocal studio. They have monitors up there for them. And and Barry's like, we got to do something about this. Our stuff doesn't sound very good. We could really make a big difference if we just went ahead and stepped up a little bit and Smokey said yeah but everybody's copying our sound it might not sound good but everybody wants it the one that drives me nuts and it wasn't recorded at Motown but it's sort of the same sort of thing is Aretha Franklin's respect it's a real tough one to make sound right yeah it is it so, sounds hollow a lot oh well it's Tenny. all it's all like yeah so what I do on that track is I bring the mid way down on my mixer. That makes like sense. Way down. And I crank the bass up and it gives it a little bit of but there's not much you can do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are tracks that just are tracks. And I learned a very valuable lesson. I've got those big plastic, you know, Lowe's Home Depot bins of CDs from back in the day. And I did what Brian did. I came out about six months ago and I'm like, I'm gonna go through these. Maybe there's tracks that I need. 
that I forgot I had on disc. Because right. unlike a lot of DJs, I wasn't anal enough to burn everything I had on yeah. CD yep, to, rip it all to my hard drives when I went to Serato. So I ended up buying stuff. I found stuff. I had stuff, whatever. Yeah. But I know there's tracks. Because as you guys know, you go through waves. Like, this is your dinner music now. Well, in six years, it's different. And yeah. in 12 years, it's much different. But maybe there's something to be said for that back then. Right. And I found a track called Hey Joe, the famous Hey Joe that I found out recently was a cover by Jimi Hendrix. I always yes. thought it was an original. Right. And I heard the original, and the original is amazing. Um, but it's by a band called Common Sense, who is a local San Diego band. Sounded amazing. Sounds great. It's very reggae. And I put it into iTunes to burn it. But what I had forgotten to do, so learn from my lesson. In iTunes, you have to tell it what the burn rate is of the track. I didn't do that. So I right. burned it into iTunes. I put the disc back in this container. I hope I didn't throw it out or <laughs> lose it because I burned it at 20 kilobytes per second. <laughs> so when I transferred it to my hard drive and so went to the option? wedding, it gives you the option. I, why? I don't know. But they use, wow. but here's the other thing. They don't use CBR. They use VBR, which is the constant bit rate, which means the track stays at that level. Uh -huh. iTunes, to save space, uses VBR variable bit rate, which means if it's a quiet part of the sound, they'll drop the bit rate to almost zero because they're saving space on the burn. Yeah, that's not a variable, I believe they call it, right? Yeah, yeah it's the variable bit rate that they practice. Yeah. What you want on a forever. CD audio, it's traditionally CBR, which is constant bit rate. So that 320K, that's where you pick up the nuances. Right. You know, when you listen to like Pink Floyd on vinyl, you're like, my God, I don't remember hearing all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... You know, let's face it, these out. stupid earbuds are not designed to really give you that amazing sound. Right. But whenever you're burning stuff, you've got to check. And I said to John before the show started, because I've had issues with some gear made by a company that rhymes with Pioneer DJ, not playing MP4 files, I've had to then burn them to MP3. Well, I purchase the professional version of easy cd da extractor okay probably 15 years ago lost the license couldn't remember the password and about six months ago contacted them and they gave me the key said oh yeah your file's right here here's the key and now i find i'm doing it more and more because here's the other catch when i was doing the driveway gigs i would buy tracks on itunes play them that night serato would show them with a bpm but when i went to play them no bpm would show up now <laughs> no no bpm isn't the end of the world what the end of the world is when there's no bpm you can't loop a track in serato if it doesn't have a bpm it can't loop because it doesn't see the beat grid because it doesn't see where the downbeat is so even day. though it plays you know Seize the day in the comment section says, but some MP3s say they are 320, but they are not. How do you even know? Well, if you rip at 320, it should be a 320 MP3 file. And there are some there are some uh, softwares out there, and Jay mentioned iTunes, and that's what I've been I've been using because you can go and set all these parameters before starting. But yeah. there was one that we used uh, years ago that uh, said it was supposed to be that, and it did not. Uh, and it was constant bit rate supposed to be three twenty, and it wasn't. It was something like two fifty or two fifty six. Well, I think I think iTunes still does two fifty six, unless you got a custom which is three twenty. Right. But if you just say burn an MP three, they're only doing a two fifty six variable bit rate, which means your tracks up and down all over the map. Well, I think I think in the um, under custom you can obviously choose, but I think for uh, pre the just selecting it's one twenty eight or one ninety two. Those are the only uh, settings that are, are click and go to. Otherwise, you have right. to jump to. Custom. Which in the earbuds is going to sound fine. I know with promo only pool, I was choosing choosing lossless MP4A. The problem became those wouldn't play on a CDJ. So I would go to a show uh -huh. with this great playlist, and there'd be three songs out of 15 that were visible. And the rest were arid. And I'm like, and I realized I've got to convert. So now I've got from only pool set to mp3 at 320k i was you just going to jump in here and and try something real quick 
Yeah. Let's see if I could show it to you. Yeah, yeah. It's, because he's showing um, your side. I can't well, show stuff because it it kills my uh, kills. Either you guys see it and they don't, or the the folks do and you guys don't. So when Brian shares, we all see it. Okay, so I can share. It's okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. If you or Jay share, then everybody can see. But yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna just here. Give me. Yeah. I'm gonna share the screen real quick and just show you how I check stuff, just to make sure that it's what I want it to be. And I'm I'm running Windows. Crap. What's going on here? I'm I'm running Windows 10. It's kind of weird seeing ourselves, you know, 30 seconds ago. Yep. Sorry about that. So this is one of my promo onlys. It's Express Audio, January 2020, Week Five. I'm just gonna grab a track. Let's do Two Chains featuring Future. Yeah. Dead Man Walking. It's one of my favorite songs. It's it's my absolute favorite. It's my joint. Mm -hmm. So if I cl if I right click here I, on the on the track it's on the MP3 file itself, I go to properties. Okay, and once I'm in properties, it tells me it's an MP3 file. It tells me how big it is, which pretty much can you know tell you what bit rate it's ripped at. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. if it's it's five point eleven um, megabytes. But the song is not long. It's a short little track. Yeah. And uh, you, you, you can look here, and you can kind of see what's going on. I find it's a... Right here, bit rate, audio bit rate, 320 kilobytes per second. The song is 2 minutes and 13 seconds long, and that's by clicking on details here. So you can come if in the, and see this stuff if you want to. If the megabyte file size is equal to the minute size, meaning if it says 2.4 megabytes and the song is like 2 minutes and 12 <clears throat> seconds long, it's not 320K. 320K is tends to be, I, I would say, double the, double the, the length of the song. Yep, so would, yeah. 4 or 5 megabytes file would be like a 2 to 2.5 two minute song. And that was about right with what I showed. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right on. Yeah. yeah and again, you know, I... We've all got our deals on hard drives. You know, I don't know what it is today on Amazon, but I bet you it's close. $167 for my Samsung T5 Evo solid state one terabyte drive. Yeah. Back in the late 90s, A, CDs were expensive. And if you didn't burn it right, it was a toast, you know, done, good, throw it out. And hard drives were insanely expensive. And now that's not the case. Right. You shouldn't be playing. There are anomalies. I have a couple files that I know are 196 or 192, and they sound loud. I don't know why. I've played them for people, and they've yeah. been like, they've got a lot of gain on them. Yeah, they must because mm -hmm. they're under 320, but they sound good. And they're tracks yeah. that, you know what? I don't know where to find. They're those well, rarities that right. you're not going to find. Well, Day Night DJs uh, made a really good point in the chat, and I'm trying to go back to this chat as much as I can. So, you know, we're involving you. Mm -hmm. but there's a reason to tune in it's a community yeah. it is a community are they buying <laughs> drinks i'm sorry <laughs> yeah yeah as soon as the show's over day night's buying around 320 <sighs> recording can still sound like crap if the original sounds like crap such as old black sabbath and that's kind of what we were talking about with the old motown stuff otis redding sitting on the dock of the bay and aretha franklin's respect yeah yeah you can't polish a turd but you yeah. should do what you can to eq the track out having said that Having the best file that you could possibly get um, in the format that you choose to use, I'm choosing to use MP3. If you want to go flack or wave, that's fine. But I feel like I'm using the best MP3 available. Sounds good on my system. Start with that, mm -hmm. and then yeah. make your tweaks from there on your GEQ if you have to. You know, I don't. I don't know if people remember. You do, Brian. John, you probably do, and I'm sure a lot most or a lot of people in the chat room. Back in the day, you'd get a bad file. And it would be a low burn rate, and it would have those pops and hisses yes. and just stuff going on. Yeah. And I learned very early on. I became a huge fan of I think it was Maxell, the black mm. CDs, the chromes. Yeah. No, I got the black, the black ones that were yes. black on both sides because I was told the blacks play music better. So boom, off I go to yeah. these black CDs that I would buy at like Fry's and Office Depot and whatever. And I just remember, like, there's a section of my CD, like, the main, you know, 
case logic case I have uh-huh. where it's like silver, silver, so whoa, all black, then back to silver <laughs> and gold yeah. and, you know, different manufacturers. And then I realized late in the game, like a hundred spindle of no name was just as good as everything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. shout outs to Ernesto. Trev, Scrap is in the room. Scrappa! He heard the new weird. ACDC. I'm in love. Any band that can continually put out the exact same song for 50 plus years with the original lineup for the I'm most exactly part the deserves my... I'm buying that CD. It's, it'll be the first full CD I've bought in quite a while. <laughs> Album, record, whatever you guys, kids want to call it these days. But I heard that video. It's trending on YouTube. I'm like, Okay, this is exactly what I want. Like they deliver they're the in and out of hard rock music. You Jimmy go there, Spinner. you know exactly what you're getting. Jimmy Spin is here. Bill Marsh, poor Bill Marsh is here. I'm gonna start calling him poor Bill Marsh. Why? Because that pink shirt Cause he I wore feel the other bad day? for Bill because he can never get a word on edgewise. It's like John, he can't talk when we're in there. <laughs> John doesn't talk anymore. And my dude from Power Jams DJs. Jimmy J Rock reads in the room too. Yeah, we we'll get some so, folks. Jimmy reads here. Yep. Yep. Jimmy's talking about using virtual <coughs> with the S11. That's what I like to say. Oh wow, man, Jimmy, you got some questions? Hit me up. And Howie, of course. Howie. Oh, should I should I mention Howie's going to be wearing a new pair of headphones pretty soon? I heard about that. Yes, uh, Howie. Howie is the Howie grand is- prize winner. Oh yeah, he mentioned he won something. Yeah, that was he uh, won won a pair of Bluetooth headphones. Excellent. By tuning in to see me. The next show, yeah, I, November twelfth. Huh? Nice. Yeah. Wow, yep. you, you, but yeah, he tuned in to see the Happy Hour Pioneer DJ Happy Hour with your host. So, and so he let, won. Let me get this correct. You come on. You're here with the show with us, and nobody gets any swag from Pioneer. But you do the show up by yourself. You know what it is? It's the Brian John effect. I did a show last week with MJ. <laughs> Just the whole thing. I think twelve minutes of it aired. Like he's like, we're gonna have to have you back. Yeah, like yeah. it was there one was, technical thing. There was, I'm calling John. We're live. He's like, I'm calling John. I'm like, I think we're live. He's like, only on five out of six. I think it would be. Oh, so, JC's here too. What's up, JC? I think it would be dope if you could talk to them about some swag, like for the show. Yeah, what do you want? You know what you I want? want. You want? Some I know show. you. Yeah, you want some well, I, I got it. I got what I want. You want some laptop stickers? I can get some laptop stickers, some t-shirts, kind of stuff lame, like that. But you know, t-shirts are good. T-shirts are good. T-shirts no. are good. And yeah. get some t-shirts once a month. Do a set you of get head the head official head. driveway yeah. party coaster. That'd be nice. Well, I think sadly in today's times, Brian, companies are burning through lots of revenue by all the shows they're doing and the amount of money they spend on hotels and airfare oh, and crazy. travel and. You know, you, you may want to take some of that into consideration. It's Vegas. not like they're rolling in dough anywhere because they haven't spent a dime this year. Yeah. I uh, I just want not, to point something else. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to headphones, the packaging costs more than the manufacturing of these damn things. Just so you know, <laughs> I'm just. Well, that's saying. you ever stop and see the stuff that you get, and you look at it and go, "I paid a dollar twelve for this," yeah. and they're making a profit. They've not only managed to manufacture wh- whatever this widget is that I've got. But they packaged it. They sent it from Asia to here. It was marked up at the dollar store or five below or wherever you bought it. And yeah, it's still, man, like I got here, this stupid thing. This is an iPhone, like 20 foot cable or a mini USB, mini USB cable. And it's like, I bought it for a dollar. Like, and everyone made money on the deal. Like, what's right. the cost? Like, 12 cents? But the whole Beats by Dre thing, I'm just laughing. I'm like, oh, oh my, my God, God, they're renting money. $3 billion. Apple bought $3 billion for Jimmy Iovine and, and Dre. That's not crazy. $3 billion. And we did, te- we did stress tests with them. Dude, those things snapped at every opportunity. But they were more fashion mm-hmm. than they were actual wear. I saw a thing yesterday, and somebody was whining about some headphones. And I'm like, he was like, yeah, man, they broke. I've had them for three years. I'm like... I'd be pretty happy. Break it down by annual. The laptop mm-hmm. you're watching this show on that I'm using, I paid nine hundred dollars for in two thousand and thirteen. John, it's my fault. I, I threw him down this rabbit hole. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. So let's get back to the, the show topic. So guys Are we on? 
Yeah, yeah. We're just we're gonna be going on any any second now, any second. And Jay, like everybody watches. Jay danced. He got close to the show topic tonight. And then he kind of danced away from it for a little bit. But uh, he started out. Small. I mentioned I mentioned no, 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 the no, easy CDDA extractor. The extractor. I was there with a program. Exactly from the the some of those things we did early on, and we were ripping. And you guys have both mentioned this. You know, we ripped them at at one twenty eight or ninety six, whatever we did at the time. They were the low. question really comes is, and and uh, Robin mentioned it in the chat that she's been ripping, but. Do you think that this is something that people should do is really dedicate themselves to going in back to those old CDs of, of songs that we play today, but the original and re-rip them if they were re-ripped over 10 years ago? I think no. it's a good idea. If, especially if you, don't, if you don't think the things sound good. You got nothing else going on right now. I mean, most of us aren't doing anything else. This would be a great project. Get Here's yourself the, a nice new hard drive. You can order that thing. You don't have to leave the house. And and load it up with your tunes and you know rip something that will tag it for you cuz that part sucks <sighs> that's but, that's that's the issue though all the ones i have you throw them in and they come up as artist title 1 artist oh. title 2 and it's like like i don't have the time in the day to put like okay this is obviously yeah. like you know lord's acid and i've got to write each song out and which mix and the ones that I felt like did the best tagging, not my favorite software, but tagging was a good thing, so I made the compromise, was iTunes. I felt like they did the best job of tagging stuff. Mm -hmm. But you do have to go in, like you said, in those advanced features and, and make it uh, you know, not a variable thing, you know, 320K rep, yeah. and it did a fine job. 100%. I, think uh, I don't know how it works now. I don't know if it wants to automatically add it to your iTunes library, because I think I had to go through... <laughs> some kind of you know i don't know ancient hindu ritual to make it not do that because it tries to integrate everything we well, have to double it. it to convert it like if you go in if you download you buy like 10 songs and you suddenly want them to be 320k you can convert them but you have to convert them within the program so now you have mm -hmm. two of each song mm -hmm. so there right. there are some little maneuvers you have to make i think the fun is to go back and look at cds once in a while yeah. And just go, man, I remember playing this. And then you look on your hard drive of 80,000 songs. You're like, how is this not on there? Yes. <laughs> right. Isn't that the truth? Like, yeah. you know, I've got the, just... yeah, I've got the best CD. It was actually given to me by Andy's uh, brother, Brian. He had a friend whose dad just played guitar. And I never really thought anything of it. But he got together with this other guy. And they cut a CD in the mid-90s. It's the most beautiful, original acoustic guitar music you've ever heard. And they printed like 50 CDs, and I have one. Hmm. I gotta rip this. It's so yep. good. I used to play it for dinner music all the time, and people come and say, oh my god, what is this? I gotta have it. You can't. <laughs> yeah, it that's, you know? that's, that's 101 on the DJ world. I got stuff yeah. when I was with the Boats, and we did a big show for the Gavin Report, which lists tours and what they revenue and it's a big deal it was um buckethead stuck mojo jerry cantrell of allison chains and head pe on a boat and i was the producer very interesting and Robert. i said to each label i got very early on got hit <laughs> to ask the label if they have any swag tell them you have all these djs so every label like higher octave sent me like 30 cds of tommy emmanuel Lara and Ray's, Craig Jakisho, um, Neil Schoen, like all instrumental CDs. But one of the big key things that you touched on that I still do is I try to play the stuff that no one has because it was right. a local purchase. Mm -hmm. If it's if good, you're, you know. If you're walking through some local town park and some guy is playing and selling his CD, yeah. right. if it's good, right. think, this. how would this sound at a wedding or a party? Right. Buy it. Be that yeah. guy that's got music that people come up to and go, what was that? Right. You know, Spaceman Spiff, I opened for them in 97. They gave me their five-song EP. I still played at Weddings During Cocktail because it's a very reggae, Dave Matthews, Jack Johnson kind of vibe. And people always, who is this? I couldn't find it on Shazam. I'm like, yeah, they don't exist. <laughs> yeah, going to. <laughs> that's why I wanted to get the Hey Joe by Common Sense to play at Weddings because it's such sure. a good version of it. And I'm like, this would be perfect to have in my arsenal. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Bill Marsh is saying that Windows Media Player is very good for tagging. It didn't used to be. Has it gotten better, Bill? Because I haven't used Windows Media Player to rip for a long time. Yeah, me, neither have I. And, you know, as soon as I say that, I'm thinking to myself, you know, maybe I have heard something with Windows Media Player. I got um, a collection from you know, those 45s. I've shown you those 45s that I got. And I'm yeah, just totally chuckling in. The same guy had years and years worth of the old um oh what the hell are they called hot hits from the 90s that went into jukeboxes remember yeah. those john mm -hmm. oh yeah they had the dancing country one and then they do the oh, yeah. hot hits yep there's pop and hot hits dancing every six weeks or whatever there's some really good stuff on there, especially on the dancing ones that oh, are remixes yeah, I, I can't find anywhere else. I, I used to have those, and, and I I don't know where those are. I well, this guy had all of them in oh, a binder, that would be and cool. I ended up with them. It's just something you're never going to see again, not a collection like no, that. It was no. very complete. No. And um, I did rip those a few years back. I mean, we're talking about four years ago, maybe, mm -hmm. but I may have used Media Player. And I'm burning time while Bill has the opportunity to answer my question, but I don't know if he has or not. Bill knows his stuff. Bill says it is. I, I tend to go with him on that one. Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. can see Ernesto's here. Yeah, we got a lot of folks with us. A lot of folks with us tonight. Hold on there. one second, gentlemen. Checking a technical thing here. Howie oh, says it's much better. I tag with the latest Windows Media Player. That's all I use it for. Hmm. That's cool because it, it used to not. I mean, yeah, some of them iTunes really, was just better. Yeah, some of them were really sad. And even in the Macintosh world, which is where I was at, iTunes, I tried others, and some were just absolutely horrible. But it was all in that that goal of not having to retype those disks in. Right. And there were well, some services online that would talk to this software, but it wouldn't talk to iTunes. You're right, yeah. Nobody talks to iTunes. <sighs> yeah. You get it. I mean, you know that I'm into wackadoodle stuff anyway. <laughs> yeah, so got can you imagine my frustration with something like Windows Media Player way back? Because it just didn't have things. Artists but I, whatever I popped in, you know, for those those um, hot hits, it actually came up, and oh, I was wow. really impressed. Sorry, guys. Those, yeah, those that hot hits uh, set was was a great. I used to use those when I would be doing some playing background music, like at a town festival or what have you, because they had a beat, so it kind of was uplifted or you know that they kind of kept the going there was energy and yet there were country songs so my yeah. rural friends and and people around were it was a win-win i don't know how many thousands of dollars they made off a of hot hits dancing country volume one yeah i mean you just bought it you didn't have to buy anything else and then you know was this like then, a platinum set because i'm not that not, familiar with it it was, was it like it was a, a uh, there were six discs in a in the uh, the hot the hot hits uh country volume one through six and it was just kind of it was a compilation of remixes that they had put together a couple of songs may oh, not have been remixes okay. but it was otherwise they were all country remixes and they were really good well they had a jukebox ah. they, they were more of a jukebox uh fulfillment company right and i used to get them oh geez the, the places i used to have to go for music there was a warehouse i used to have to go to to get the stuff because they didn't have a storefront do you knock on but the door and hide these things you too. needed a password what do you want? No, I, you had to ring a bell. The moon is brown. They, they had a Milwaukee. camera. They saw you. Then they let you up the elevator into the warehouse. And you just went to this big warehouse. And Oh, hey, Bri. What do you need today? Yeah. And those yeah. guys in there were just... Pat you down and make sure there's... The guys and girls in there were absolute musical the savants. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. remember the source? I don't even know if he's still around. Was it like the source? Yeah, the source. He had a lot of... Uh... He had a lot of that stuff. He he was the only guy I knew you could find like Funky Mix, Ultimix, yeah. X Mix, Hot yeah. Track, whatever. Like everything, it, it was like kid in a candy store on Adderall. It was mm -hmm. like, oh my god, he's got everything. They did. They did jukeboxes. They well, you know, they but they didn't do them. They supplied jukebox yeah. people with the stuff. Nice. And they did record stores. You know, like. Or anything, they they were the distributor for for the area, and I think That's they awesome. did a lot of Chicago stuff too. Because the so source is out of Chicago, high. yeah, it may be it might be affiliated in some way. Could have been that was, guy was out of Chicago. I know we used to have a store downtown called Radio Doctors in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. It was really hot. It was right across from Mecca Arena where all the concerts were. So 
the cool thing about it was you could go to the record store, you could buy the record and go to the concert or vice versa. They open late after the concert and they have blowout sales. Sometimes the Smart. artists would sign records in there. But it was one of those Smart. really cool record stores. Kind of looked like First Avenue in Minneapolis. It was that big and kind of a corner storefront, real cool looking. Um, the I people who days. ran that started this warehouse, but it wasn't wow. the storefront. But it was all the people collectively from Radio Docs got right. together. You know, the people who ran the cool DJ section in the basement and that stuff, they got together and opened this warehouse. I don't know if it's still there or not. But Probably not, yeah. I go in there and get these when I needed them. I was working clubs and I just needed mainstream crap. And it was even before I had a promo only subscription. So, you know, it would have the hits on there before I knew I needed them. I got, when I went to the boats, the first thing that they handed me that they owned in house was what was called the Mobile Beat Top 400. <laughs> yeah. You familiar with this? I got in trouble with those. I'll be right back. Oh, it, it was on, yeah, it was on the same list as the Platinum. Mm hmm. But I just remember back in the day, and it's hard for young DJs who can so readily get their hands on content, right down to you know stolen hard drives on Craigslist, to understand that that was the absolute goal of goals was like, can I actually maybe find a you know version of the Platinum series? Because mm -hmm. it was like I'd seen it in other DJs' hands, but I'd never had it. And then when they gave me the Mobile V400, I'm like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And I, when I was cleaning the garage the other day, I found one of the lists that breaks it down by BPM year. I got to tell you, you could do a lot of gigs with those oh, as yeah. long as nobody wanted much past 98 or mm -hmm. 97. But up until that point, you were pretty set. And I'm sure that they got in trouble and it was illegal, but still, it was shocking. Here's a Hot Hits Pop Volume 82. Yeah, yep, there they are. Uh, there you yeah, go. So, like you see the picture of the jukebox on it. Mm -hmm. So, oh, perfect. Oh, yeah, those are the jukebox with these. Some of the but they were great for DJs, mm -hmm. too, you know. Yeah, they, they advertised in the early Mobile Beat magazine issues in the mid 90s, is where oh, they in the did. back kind of thing. Yep, they were in the back. That's where I found out about them. And, and uh, they were some of the first things I bought. That in Wolfram Video. Um, Wolfram Video was out of. Um, West oh, Dallas, yes, yeah, yeah, right here in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. yep. Uh, those were the those are some of my early music purchases. From... Wolfram Video had the best music videos. They were here in Milwaukee, and you can't even find a reference to them on the internet anymore. Mm -hmm. Like they don't exist. If you Google Wolfram, all this other stuff comes up. But back in the old days, like John's saying, shoot, oh my gosh, all the early clubs that I worked at that had video. Yeah, like the first video club I worked at, like big major club. I think it was 19 years old. So it was like, I don't know what, 1990 and everything was Wolfram and Wolfram was so good. And you could buy the, the pre mixed videos mm -hmm. Yep, where you could get like, you give you like 40 minutes of just current dance. Stick that VCR like, tape in and off you went. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they had them for all kinds of stuff. So like you could get one with like the Paula Abdul and the Madonna and and you know whatever the prince was on there all kinds of stuff and it all sounded right mm -hmm. you could get the energy one with cc pennison and crystal waters and 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 um black box and yeah all that mm -hmm. stuff or you could get the alternative one with the cure and ministry and thrill kill cult and nice. that kind of stuff too lords of acid or whatever so they had several different series they did a great job i don't know anybody who worked there I don't know what happened to the place, but that was the best source for videos. I think they were purchased by ETV. Were they? And I think ETV. I want to. I think ETV. The platinum. The original platinum series was that ETV and promo only. Yeah, yeah I believe that. So I think then ETV, yeah, promo only was involved. I know yeah, that. Yeah, I think then that's where the uh, the video side of ETV. Uh, they went and I think that they became they either acquired or they just kind of dissolved and what have you. You know, John, oh. quick side note. I'm sorry, Brian, real, real oh, fast because cool. I'll forget. Down the road, I'd love to do maybe half a show to the instrumental music that people are playing at their events because it's kind of listening to all the music and thinking of the stuff that I'm playing, the throwbacks and the one-offs and all that. And there's so much good instrumental, you know, whether it's playing West Montgomery or whether it's playing something that's from your town. or. But I'm always curious... What are DJs actively for events, whether they're working now or not? But what's their go-to? If somebody's like, 
you know what I'm going to do like a half an hour during dinner of instrumental. Are they doing Miles Davis or are they doing George Benson? Are they doing this one? Or are they doing that one? Just be interesting. I think to have a discussion of, you know, this is good instrumental for this, like some zero seven, but this is better instrumental for that. Just as a learning thing, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny. You mentioned that because if I think back to when I first started doing this, we always had these, there were Wyndham Hill samplers. It was all piano music. And there was like, yeah, winter. I think Enya was on that too. This was at one point. Maybe. maybe. But that, that was more like the, the pure moves kind of thing where it was right. all of that. I remember the Wyndham with the piano. That's right. Yeah. God, so we heard that get, in years. We, we'd throw those on for like yeah. dinner. That was dinner music. And then. I remember when I started my own company, I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get some contemporary stuff that people know. I'm going to buy some Kenny G CDs. Oh, <laughs> whoosh. Whoosh. Yeah, right. And, cool. and David Sanborn, <clears throat> you know. Yeah. No, I, I'm right there with you. I, when I, I remember going to Kobe's swap meet and for $3 buying the Lethal Weapon 2 or 3, I think. The one that I, had I the have Sting those. track. But it had some David Sanborn instrumentals. And I'm like, I'm going to play these. Mm -hmm. And these are going to sound so cool during dinner because I'm so tricky as a DJ. Look at me. I'm being all individual. And yeah. I just thought I was the, the <laughs> shit for doing that. I really did. I was like, look at me. I'm standing above and beyond. I buckethead when he gave me his Coma CD in 97, all instrumental acoustic. I'm like, I'm, it was, it's a bit much to bite into, but there's a couple tracks that do fit. But I always thought part of being a great DJ was picking great instrumental. Plus, if you don't have Miles Davis, so what? The nine minute and 25 minute, nine minute, 25 second version. I highly recommend it goes on your list. And quick story. I had the honor of having Bill Walton, the basketball player, officiate a wedding for a wounded veteran a few years ago. And Bill Walton's 6'11 and a half and he's very tall and he's mm -hmm. very outgoing. And he's a huge deadhead. And as a treat for Bill Walton, I played a live version with um, Branford Marsalis playing on it live from Connecticut of Eyes on the World. And he complimented me and said, wow, this really shows how, how much of a professional you are that you would know to play this because this is probably the best version of this. The groom was a huge deadhead. It's also 37 minutes long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what what I have to do yes. is it's hard to do. I'm trying to concentrate on what you're saying. And I'm trying to hold the thought <laughs> that I was going to continue with when you interrupted me with your. You seem like you needed room. That's where yeah. I came in. So I'm going to go back. I got back, I got to back up a little bit and go off that ramp. So this Abbott Costello thing we had. Yeah. I I saw it as you needed room. So I graduated to a Paul Hardcastle CD a couple Ooh. years later. That I really liked and people really didn't know, except for Rainforest. But I had some good stuff on it. But as many of you know, and I think John will agree with me here, if you hear Kenny G the wedding, you might as well put a cheese head hat on because you're you're just not cool anymore if yeah, you're playing so Kenny G the wedding. No. Oh okay. I did a wedding, I think it was in July, and the bride specifically asked for Kenny G music, not only for her wedding prelude. For her uh, dinner music, because her grandfather loved Kenny G. Oh, so okay. I broke out Kenny G for the first time in twenty years. And you know what? I've done it a couple times since. <laughs> I, I can't help it. It's like the point is what? to make people happy with music. So. Nobody's heard this in a long time. Yeah, no, it's, I don't it's have true. to. It's it throwback right. now. Yeah, I don't have to dive into like this really cool smooth jazz stuff. And I do that a lot. Like I'll I'll get my. My um my top hits USA subscription has smooth jazz and it's good, but what you don't want to do is get the vocal jazz. You want the instrumental jazz. It doesn't always tell you it's instrumental, so you got to know the tracks and preview them and stuff. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll play one thinking it's instrumental and it's like a a breakup song. It's like, oops, next track. <laughs> uh, so it was just nice to go back to King G. Mm -hmm. There's it's really one. nice. Well, I mean, 90, 98, 99 was the first time that Vitamin Strings Quartet got on my radar from wow. a client saying, we'd like this. Mm -hmm. And they had a CD. And I'm like, 
this is amazing. What is this? And I went and did some research and realized, wow, they're like an online group. Because I don't think they were sold in stores. They You turned me on to them. Yeah. You mm-hmm. turned me on to vitamin strings. I, I to tell me about it. still use vitamin strings for s- prelude for wedding ceremonies. 100% of my weddings are either vitamin strings and or piano guys. And when I, I bring yeah. this to a bride and groom's attention, they always come back with, oh, my God, we love 90s alternative. We notice they have an entire set of death cab for cutie. Can you play this? And we like this Pearl Jam. And we like this, you know, Penny Royalty by Nirvana. Absolutely. And it's it funny, never I, fails. People love it. I did a wedding a while back where, you know, everything she's telling me that she wants, in my head, I'm thinking it's all vitamin string. And she says, and we're really big fans. And this was, I don't know, probably going back maybe 10 years ago. We're big fans of postmodern jukebox. I'm like, okay. Scott Bradley, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes. So I get what she wants. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I mean, you know what? I didn't you think I'd it. have an opinion on this stuff. No, postmodern. Like, who cares? It's dinner music, but I really yeah. disliked it. I, I think there's I'll, something, but with postmodern, I think that part of it is the appeal is that you can watch the video and you have the singers and the, and the, the way they're doing a lot of the things in the time. The, the, uh, setting up that We're time. dress time period. Time periods, and, and, yeah, and, exactly. Because yeah. that, 100%. I've used it's them for maybe a video. not translating as well to audio only is what you're saying. I it could. Be. I agree with John. I think if you have the video as the reference, like if you have, you know, Puddles the Clown. Yeah, that was. If you don't see him doing chandelier, you're just like it's a guy singing. Then you see a seven foot tall clown who's sad but doesn't speak. Now the translation it, is yeah, like exactly. eight million views. Gotcha. But, you yeah. know, I've got four or five discs off, you know, some night that iTunes had a sale and I think they're called Vintage Lounge. And it's like two and three piece jazz configurations doing pop songs, everything from Cashmere by Led Zeppelin to Prince songs to you name it. Hmm. And again, you need to get the right crowd. I actually opened for a guy named Richard Cheese about 10 years ago, and he did this whole like Paul Anka's swinging hits, Richard Cheese kind of started that. He took songs with swears and everything and just put this like cool boppy jazz thing. You turn me on to him too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fault. And yeah, yeah. thank we've you. Talked, we've talked but I mean, that. you know, play Fight for Your Right to Party by Richard Cheese at a wedding or Baby Got Back. And it's like, it's a whole new. I level. like doing another brick in the wall. Yeah. That's another good one. I like yeah. doing that one. But I cut out the dumb little bit he does in the break. I cut that out. Yeah. And and watch the language. It. He will swear. Gentlemen, not another, not another brick in the wall. <laughs> no, but I'm on other tracks. We, we are, I we do are, bust yeah. a move. I do. We are up to our hour, guys, and we didn't wow. even Already? talk about Halloween. Wow. We didn't even go into it. We didn't even go into it, but we covered we covered a lot of next week. Well, you, you, well, next week's after Halloween. After we got to do Halloween. Thanksgiving songs. We so should we do song. should we do ten minutes of overtime for Halloween? Does Jay have 10 minutes of I, I I I I have 10 minutes worth of wine. I mean, 10 minutes <laughs> worth of time left. I can definitely hang for this. What I wanted to do, guys and gals, was I wanted to see whether you're working this week or not. And I highly recommend if you're not working this week, if you have access to a driveway, a sidewalk, a porch, or even Twitch, About whatever, me. do a live set of Halloween. Just turn on all your lights, turn them red, turn them whatever. But do a set, but do it in the spirit of if you're doing a party for Halloween. I'm going to be doing that out of my driveway this Friday. I have not spun out of the driveway in like three months. But because I thank God I'm grateful and thankful I have a wedding on Saturday. Sadly, it's a wedding that is a wedding on Halloween, as the bride said, not a Halloween wedding. Because I had visions of I could wet the hair and do that whole like the crow thing, but none of that's happening. But that said... I wanted to see if you guys and gals had some songs. Let's skip over Thriller. Let's skip over Monster Mash. Ghostbusters. The, the eight, yeah, Ghostbusters. The stuff that we all know we're going to play on Halloween. So I will start things. And I know my second song, Brian will probably give, so I won't give my second choice, but I'm predicting he will give it. I got to think of something I won't. Okay. Uh, you might, though. Um, 
and I will just now I'm not going to say that because it's too much of a hint. I will give my first song, the long version, because it's like seven minutes long, Bloodletting by Concrete Blonde. That is a standard for the Halloween season for me. I will be playing that Friday. Brian, a song that is a Halloween song, but may not be considered as such, or that most people may not know, let's say. Well, I'm thinking... If I were to be playing in my front yard, I wouldn't be playing to a dancing crowd, but I'd be playing to a listening crowd. Right. And just to keep in the spirit of thing, how about Atlantic Rhythm Section with Spooky? Whoa, that's a great choice. That's a great choice. Great track, great version. I'm trying not to be predictable here. No, you're certainly not. Because I thought you were going with what I would have given my second choice. No, but close. I would have gone with something that I think Mr. Dowdle would be very happy to hear. Involving, I'll name one of the members. A member, one of the members, a gentleman named Peter Murphy. Okay. So I would have gone with probably Bauhaus. Well, Bell Lugosi's dead. Yeah. John, what would you go with? I, I, I don't see Huey Lewis uh, having. I was going to say, what Huey Lewis song, song is scary. Uh, I, I, yeah, I want exactly. a new drug is basically Ghostbusters That's scary. backwards. Exactly. Yeah, there was yeah, that. That's as that close one. as I, I could have gotten. But, you know, that after that, I, I don't. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's the... Huey Lewis in the news has that video where the guy's a vampire. Isn't the bass player a vampire? The guy that smoked? Yeah. Or, like, really, like... What yeah, video like was that? Oh, where, gosh, the, I don't remember. Somebody in the, in the video is a vampire. It's off of sports. I don't remember that. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, Jay? Yeah, I do. I can't think of the track, I but I know... This, yeah. yeah, it was him and a girl. Mind. Are you thinking of the beach scene on If This Is It? Where no. he's like, they're rubbing like tanning lotion on leather. No, that's a very different vibe. No, yeah, th- yeah. this is. Um... <laughs> I'm, it's Temecula thing. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it not... seemed like a swingers thing. I'm. I apologize. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Maybe, maybe it is a one new drug or something like that. But yeah. anyway, yeah. So you got nothing for us, John? Yeah, unfortunately, I, the thing or uh, Halloween is not one that I do uh, that I've done very often. So it's really what now when I put too much uh, too much time into. <clears throat> Anything off the Crow soundtrack would be appropriate. Okay, how about David Bowie's Scary Monsters and Super Creeps? That's a great one. See, that's a great one. You could have done with Bow Wow Wow. I want you know, I, I want, want candy. candy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Stuff nice. like that. You yeah. know. I'm just I, it just seems that there's to me, there's probably like 10 atypicals. And it's always like, how do you go out of that without going extreme? Like I'd love to play typo negative, but you know, it's a hard sell to mm-hmm. the kids and the moms. It's a very hard sell to the kids. You know, you here's some typo negative, everybody. Uh, this well, is scaring me. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I think that, you know, if I... Werewolves of London, take... John. I could see you doing Warren Zevon, Werewolves of London. Ah. Uh, uh, you now, yeah, if I were no. to take artistic liberties, and this is me, Generation X guy, I'm, I'm doing this whole rabbit hole game where I'm thinking about where did the people dress weird? Where did the people look freaky? What were they listening to? It was alternative night in any club from 1988 to 1993. And it was the cure. It was Susie, the Banshees, but you could even go back into some of the early new wave stuff like Gary Newman cars. It just sounds weird. It's got kind of that fear and sound in it. Oh yeah. And anything Friends, are fear in it. Friends are electric. That's a really kind of bizarre robot or you know what? A good one. Garbage man by the cramps. What's you ever heard one? that song? That's oh, that's man, a no. great Halloween ish because the cramps are very Halloweeny, or something by you know by Misfits. I love Last Caress. Yeah, there, I, there's I all kinds see. of weird stuff you can do. No, but, no, no. I I think there's a lot if you want to deep dive it. You could you could go down a lot of roles. I have to admit, with your last description, it just dawned on me. And this is looks aside. Hair aside, the whole nine yards. But I have to say this now because it, it, it has just hit me like a ton of bricks. I am saying it here and now. It will be said again by thousands in the future, long after I'm gone. Brian S. Red, in my opinion, now that I've seen that, is the Andy Warhol of the DJ world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why you would say that. And I'll tell you why I said that. Because you got so descriptive, so in the moment, so visual that I'm like, 
son of a bitch, this guy's Andy freaking Warhol with the <laughs> visuals over here. Because he's like 1988, but you don't have the voice, the face, the hair, the they color. Yeah. None but of there, it. There's that. But if you did, just for a second, if you, like a Truman Capote ash voice or something, <laughs> if you could just be like from 1988 to 1991. Yeah, if I was a homosexual in my 50s, in the 70s, I would, yeah. yeah that's right. Hey, Brian. Well, you're halfway there with the name. Um, so, but really, that's. I think there's a lot you could come up with. I see the chat room is flying here. Yeah, disturbed um, sound of silence. That's a great one. Doing it all for my baby was the video you guys were talking about with the Halloween mm, theme. There you go. Yeah, I mean, you know, oh, docking, you. you know, Dream Warriors, Bride, from, of Frank, Bride of Frankenstein theme. And and I, a lot of people don't know this because they're not old like me. So I will turn you on to a track if you don't know this. By all means, try the instrumental Frankenstein by the Edgar, Edgar Winter Group. group. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you'd be surprised, Brian. Written by you and Dan I Hartman. Might, written by Dan Hartman. And Dan Hartman on the same album who sang on Come On, Take free a Free Ride. ride. Yep. They and eventually went on to have a great disco song with uh, You Can Dream About It. And if you really want to scare the kids, show them a picture of Edgar Winter on the They Only Come Out at Night. Oh, the ever. cover where he's like the girl. He's flying or whatever. Girl flying. Flying. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is that is Edgar right. Winter is uh is, is it politically correct to call him an albino because he is well that's what he is yeah no okay yeah he the, he's an albino yeah so he's he like has a twin brother looking, yeah a he's a bit. twin brother Johnny Winter yeah he's and he's most dope. amazing blues Edgar's still alive Johnny passed away a few years ago but as far as blues guitar players go Johnny Winter is in the top ten of all time as far as being in a masterful blues artist. Both out of I, I want to say Austin or somewhere. I yeah, Texas, you're right. But I think I think it's Austin. But yeah, that's a great album. Dan um, Ronnie Montrose on guitar. I think produced by Rick Derringer because Rick Derringer Probably. came in and out of that band as well as Johnny's. Yeah. Well, after he left Ohio with Hang On Sloopy and the Real McCoys. Once in a while, John, the memory just works, and I have to kind of compete with the Andy oh, Warhol man. of the DJ world, <laughs> Brian S. Red. <laughs> Daniel's mentioning Skeletons in the Closet by Louis Armstrong and I forgot all about that song I totally by, forgot about that I, well, the song Skeletons by um, Stevie Wonder remember yeah, he oh, did that jam oh damn yeah he did Skeletons in your closet it should go outside that was kind Dead of a man's, cool song totally Dead Man's Party Oingo Oingo Boingo. Boingo. Sure. Or even weird sites anything Oingo Boingo would be by fun. the way I just mm -hmm. saw that a few weeks ago to show it to Colin and have to admit, got as much joy out of watching Weird Science now as I did then. Hmm. It's fun. What a! It's such a fun movie because it's just so, like, yeah, totally. This makes sense. Kelly LeBrock just shows it's got up. Got Rat Wanted Man in the soundtrack. How bad can it be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And of course, our friend Mr. Robert Downey Jr. playing a minimal role before yeah, his career, a supporting role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is pre less than zero and everything yeah. else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He looks like a kid because he is a oh, kid. Yeah, he was then. I even Halloween. like, I, I really, for some reason, whenever I've done Halloween parties for big people, I like Devo for Halloween. I think Devo totally fits. Well, I do too, but for Halloween, I think it, for some reason it's appropriate. I don't know why, but it, it feels totally appropriate. is appropriate. Yeah. Well, you want one like Devo? Um, Dark Knight by the Taran Tito and the Tarantulas. It's on the Dust to Dawn soundtrack. And again, oh, if, yeah. you, if you've if you got a gig and you're confused, look to the movies. You'll be surprised the songs that you can pull from A Weird Science or A Dust Till Dawn or something scary. There are tracks that are actually there waiting for you to find them and discover them. We didn't and, even mention one of your favorites, uh, Cry Little Sister. No, and that's, that's a whole nother debate. I had that debate with someone last week over a proper 12 um did a wedding and the owner of the venue was very gracious to let me try a mccallum's 12 which i didn't know was like 100 bucks a bottle and a proper 12 by conor mcgregor we had a little tasting and he's playing cry little sister and i go oh you'd like this um typo negative love you to death and he freaked over it. he's like oh my god i'm like you have you heard burn by the cure he's like no put that on he's like oh <gasps> Yeah, it was one of those like when you turn someone onto music and they get excited. It was one of those nights. I love doing. But that. yeah, there's cry. I mean, Lost Boys soundtrack 
It's good. Well, yeah, the good. NXS and Ernie Barnes song "Good Times" is still the best song on that album. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, oh, it was good. No, I'd, I'd go with you on that. One. It's mm-hmm. really good. But it was the Lost Boys. I mean, that was that movie. So anybody who's seen that movie, oh, when you're strange, Echo and the Bunny Men's on there. That's perfect too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Covering uh, the doors, of course, but still yeah, a great track. Right, but the Echo and the Bunnyman was in the movies, so there's an association. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, but the they doors. All, people I mean, they all absolutely. had that. Susie and the Banshee had dark tracks, even when it wasn't Halloween. Echo had it. <laughs> yeah, it's like first, they like they all had those kind of like, what's this? This is kind the of pickup is just disturbing. It's it's backwards basically, and. Well, the drums are backwards. Oh, yeah, and wax tracks, of and course. the trumpets backwards. They all of that. Yeah, Lords of Acid, Dark Halloween, My Life Thrill Kill, all about the B movie. You know the kill, kill faster, faster, pussycat stuff. All that stuff. Just Russ Myers catalog. Yeah, no, this, uh, there's so much to choose from. Of course, mm-hmm. no one's going to like it, but me and Brian. But still, if you play exactly, it, so I'm just thinking, we're going to have a great time. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. going to totally get it. If you're, playing playing da- like, if you're playing Daisy Chain, why aren't you playing Satan? Ghostbusters? No, no, no. Yeah, we're, we're you play thriller. Daisy Chain. I, I'm ready for to do Satan. Thriller. Play Thriller. I'm, I'm thriller. ready to do that thing. You know, Rockwell. Somebody's watching me. Come on, yeah. play some Halloween songs, gentlemen. Like we need to too. we need to wrap up. We are now at our ten minutes after. So thank you guys for being with us tonight. The children. Oh, I should put the link for the children into the end of the chat. H TCP, djntv.com slash chill. You guys can go there and have some more time talking music and such, and we will catch you next week. Good night, everybody. Thank you.